welcome back to Dr. Vipin Sabatik and Bioinformatics Classroom. Uh, very happy new year to all of you. And let's get started again with our R series. So in the last lecture, we had talked about how to deal with DNA or protein sequences using a second R library. In this lecture, we look at how to read a FASTQ file in R. And the library we are going to use here is the short read library. Also, what is important is that the short read library is not found in the CRAN archive. We have to install it through the bioconductor package. So short read library is a part of the bioconductor package, which is a larger group of programs meant for genome data analysis. We'll talk in more details about bioconductor in a later lecture. Let's get started with the short read library. Now, since the short read library is part of the bioconductor suite, so first you need to install what is known as the bioconductor manager or bio C manager. So these two lines of code basically allow you to install the BIOS manager in your R environment. So basically it, it will check whether the BIOS manager is present or not. If it is not present, it will install the BIOS manager. So once you've installed the BIOS manager, now the bioconductor packages can be installed using the BIOS manager. And I'm sure by now you know that when you're using a library for the first time, the library has to be installed into your own environment. So the command to install the short read library using the BIOC manager is, you say BIOC manager, double colon, install, and then you open your round brackets and within single quotes, you mention the name of the library that you want to install. In this case, it is short read library, right? In my case, the library is already installed, so I'll not run this part of the program. So this is going to install the short read library into your R environment. So after installation, you need to invoke the libraries that you require into your program. So in this case, I'm going to use three libraries. Of course, you're going to use library short read. So we invoke the short read library saying library and in round brackets short read. Right? Likewise, you're going to also invoke library ggplot2 and library tidyr. So let me run this part so that all the libraries are called into the program. So here you are. And if you remember from previous lectures, I've already told you it is good to define your working directory. So we say set working directory or set WD. And I give the file path where my input file is. So I say set WD, uh, F partition, colon, then backslash, and then the folder name that is R human genome. So my file that I'm going to read is present in this folder. So what this does is that whenever you ask the program to read a file or write a file, the default folder where it is going to look for the file to read and also create a file to write is going to be your, the path that you've set here. I'm sure you know about the fast to file format because this is a standard file format for next generation sequencing data. So let's have a look at our fast queue file. So here I use the command file.show and as an argument to the file.show, I give the name of the file I want to look at. And this is sec.fastq. So when you run this now, the file will load up here. So if you see here, this is our FASTQ file, and I'm sure you already know about it, but uh, just to give you a brief, each sequence is represented as a four line format, right? So this is one sequence information, which is presented in four line format. The first line begins with the at the rate sign, and then it has some unique ID. The second line is the actual sequence here, if you see this one, right? ATGC, and then the third line, has a plus sign to begin with, and sometimes it also has the repetition of the identifier, but many a times you can have just only the plus sign. And the last line is what gives its name. This is the quality score line, right? So this is the Q line of the fast Q or the quality score line. Uh, these are basically ASCII encrypted characters. They actually mean a numerical value between ranging from zero to 40. Uh, also what you can notice is that the second line and the fourth line are exactly of the same length. So let's go back to the program and now look at the features of the short read library and its functions. So there are six key functions here. First one, of course, is read fast queue. This is used to read the fast queue file. Remember also, because fast queue files are very large, you also have additional functions that can read your file in badges, right? And we'll talk of that in a later lecture. So here you are, this is read fast queue. This is used to read the fast queue file into the R object. Then you have the length function. This is to basically tell you how many sequences are there in your fast queue file. Then you have the third one that is called width function. Width function tells you the length of individual sequences in the file, right? 
Then of course you have the ID function that can pull out the unique identifier for each sequence from the first line. Then of course you have the S read function. S read function is to read the sequence line in the FASTQ file, the second line actually in the FASTQ file format. And then you have the quality function that is basically used to decipher the quality scores. That is the fourth line for each sequence in the file, right? So we'll now look at these functions one by one. So first, of course, we need to read your file into a R object. So we do that here. So we say fastq equals to read fastq sec dot fastq. So sec dot fastq is the file which I've already shown you here, and this is being read into fastq object using the read fastq command. Right. So here you are. You run this part, and now you have your sequences in the fastq variable name. If you want to see the summary of your file, you can directly say print fastq. It will give you the number of sequences as also the range of the width of sequences or the individual length of sequences. Right. So here you are. You have 2000 reads and the read length varies from 25 to 310 basis. So next, uh, you could also look at uh, the number of sequences by using the length command, as I already told you. So you can say length fast q, and this is equated to a variable name, number of reads, right? So you say number of reads equals to length fast q, and then you're printing the number of reads here. So you say run, and this will give you 2000 again. So our file contains 2000 sequences. So if I were to ask you how many actual number of lines are there in this file. So this should be easy. You should be able to calculate. Each sequence is represented by four lines. So there must be 8,000 lines in your file. All right, so next we move on and we talk of the next command that is width. So width is used to check the length of individual reads, right? So here you are, you can say width fastq. Fastq is the object into which you have read your file. And we and we are equating it to the variable name read length. And then we print read length. So let me run this part first here. And you get your read length as the vectors. The first sequence is 149 basis. The second one is 161. Third one is 161, so on and so forth. The 199th is 148. Likewise, the thousandth one here is uh, 159. So this is basically a vector of 2000 values uh, containing the read length of the individual 2000 sequences. So let's say now you want to plot the read length. So we will use the base R instead of ggplot for now. So we are going to say hist and read length, right? So when you say hist read length, it is going to create a histogram of the read length. So when you run this here, here is your histogram of read length. And you can see most of the read lengths are in the range of 150 bases. Uh, very few are above 200 and very few are below 100, right? So that's the basically the spread of the read length. The frequency is plotted on the y-axis and the read length is plotted on the x-axis. So next we look at the sread command of the short read. Uh, this is basically to follow the sequence uh, line from the fastq file. So we say sequence is equal to sread fastq and then we are saying print sequence. So when you run the sread command, you can have a preview of your sequence. And this gives you the five prime and the three prime of the sequence. And the three dots in between indicate the remaining part of the sequence. So it is like your start and end of the sequence is displayed. So here you are. This is giving you the first five and the last five sequences in your file. And in the second column, it gives you the width of the sequence, 149. The first uh, sequence is 149 basis. The fifth sequence is 166. Likewise. The last sequence in the file is 158 basis. And I've deliberately kept a smaller file so that we are able to demonstrate things more clearly, right? Next, we look into the quality. So the command that you use is quality. And we say quality underscore scores equals to quality fast q, right? Fast q is the object into which you have read your file. So that serves as an argument to the quality function. And then, of course, we are saying print quality underscore scores. And uh, when you run this part here, so you get the width of the sequences or the length of individual reads. And 
followed by the actual quality scores at the five prime end of the sequence and also equal number of nucleotides at the three prime end of the sequence here, right? So this is basically a sample representation of the quality scores of your sequence. But of course, uh, you may not be able to decipher this without the key. So therefore, if you want to see what each of these characters stand for in terms of the PRED score, you could basically look at the key here. So it says encoding, and then of course, quality, fast Q, the argument. When you run this now, you'll get the key here. So if you want to see what does F stand for, F stands for a score of 37, right? So one thing that you can clearly see is that uh, while the special characters stand for poor quality scores, the alphabets actually stand for good quality scores. For example, here A stands for 32 and I stands for 40, right? 40 is a very healthy score to have. And then, of course, again, if you want to know more, you can go back to my past file format lecture and have a look. So you can convert this ASCII characters into actual numeric uh, values by using this uh, command here. You say as quality underscore scores, comma, and in uh, single quotes, you mention matrix and close the round bracket. We equate this to a variable name is course, right? So, and then next we print this course here. So when you run this here, now you have your scores. So scores basically shows as a matrix. The rows are representing the individual reads. So this is the first read, second read, third read. The columns represent individual positions in the read. So this is the first position, the first read. So one comma one is the first read, first position, the score is 34. And then if you move on first read, 105th position, the score of that individual nucleotide is 34, the Fred score we're talking about. And then beyond a point, you start seeing NAs. That is because these reads are not very long and therefore they do not have values here. Uh, if you remember, we had, when we had checked the read length, the, the range of read length was from 25 to 310. So therefore you have this last column that is in the 10th position and all the three reads do not have a nucleotide here. So you have an NA value here. Next, we would want to know the ID of the read. So for that, the command is ID, right? And uh, you say ID, and then of course the object name into which I've read your file. So this is past Q, and we equate it to ID of reads. So we say ID of reads equals to ID fast Q, and then of course you are going to print the ID of reads. So when you run this here, you get your ID of reads again, and again it is shown in the format of first five and last five. So now let's say you want to look into a specific set of sequences and not the entire file. So you could subset your uh, fast queue object. And uh, here you are. So you say fast queue one is to 10. This is going to give you the information for the first 10 sequences here. The length is 10 reads because you're looking at one to 10. And the width for these sequences is from 131 to 168 cycles, which means that the range of the read length for the first 10 reads is 131 to 168. Let's look at some other position. So let's say we want to look at the read length of uh, the sequence number 1001 until 1010. So the notation is 1001 comma 1010. And when you run this now, here you are. So you get the read length for sequences from 1001 to 1010 position here. Likewise, if you want to see the individual sequences of these uh, particular subset, so you say sequence. And again, in square brackets, 1001, 2010. And when you say run here, you will get the sequence information for these particular sequences. And again, and this will come with the width. So this is your sequence number 1001. This is your sequence number 1010. And this is the length of the sequences here. And this is your preview of the sequence, the five prime sequence and the three prime sequence. The start and end of the sequence is shown to you. Likewise, you could look at the quality scores and you say run, and this gives you an idea of the quality scores for the subset that you want to look at. And likewise, you could also get the ID of reads here, right? So here you are, the ID of reads for sequences 1001 to 1010 is shown here. So sequence length can also be pulled out in the form of uh, data frames. So you say sec underscore length equals to as dot data dot frame, and then in round brackets, sequence at the rate ranges at the rate width. So if you remember, width is where the actual sequence length is stored, right? 
And then of course you can print this. So let me run this part here and this is what you get here. So now you have a data frame that is basically containing the length information for sequences.